What's going on everyone, Travis here, and today I'm bringing you an exciting tutorial on how to create some glass text in Photoshop just like this one, and this one, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And it's actually pretty easy, so let's go ahead and just get started. So let's create a new document, and I'll start with one, let's see, film and video? No, I don't want that. I don't want that. I want web. Let's do 16 by 1200 at 72 resolution. Hit OK. All right, so by default, we need to unlock this background layer. Just double click on it, hit enter. Now it's unlocked, and we'll hit control I to make it black, which is invert. So what we want is we want a gradient in the background. So double click on your background layer and hit gradient overlay. And we want to click on this gradient here, and we want it to be black to white to black. And what we want to do is we want to change this white color in the middle. We'll double click on it, or we'll hit color down here. And we want to change this to a dark color, whichever one we want. We'll do, let's just do red. Yes. Hit OK, hit OK, hit OK. So now we've got our background. And now the next thing we need to do is we just need to create some text. So hit T on your keyboard and go ahead and just click once somewhere on the screen and start typing out what you're going to make. So we're going to we're gonna make the word glass, but what you want to do is you want to do this one letter at a time. So Go ahead and just start out with whatever font you want. Uh, this font is called Transformers, by the way. You can download it at dafont.com. That's D-A-F-O-N-T.com. So what we do is we create this little G here, and we're going to double click on the G to bring up the layer styles. And layer styles, you know, you can just apply things like bevel and emboss, stroke, you know, drop shadows, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. But for this, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and check bevel and emboss, and we want to change the style to pillow emboss, and we want the depth to be like crazy high, 800%. And we want the size to be about 10 pixels. Soften, move that to zero, direction is up, and leave all these things by default. It's 120 angle, 30, use global light, yada, yada, yada. Uh, check anti-aliasing, and change this glass contour box doohickey thing to this right down here which is ring so boom that's done alright now we want to apply a stroke on the inside here for position and we want the size to be about one pixel and we'll change the color to a, a red color uh, if you're using like a green background you want it to be green so on the next thing we want to do is we want to add an inner shadow and we want the blending mode of that to be yeah, we want it normal and we want the color to be white and we want the distance to be 0 and the size to be 5 pixels, 75% opacity. Everything else is pretty much the default. The next thing we want to do is we want to add a gradient overlay. And we want this to be uh, black to white to black. So go ahead and just click on the gradient. Move this white over here. Click and add a new one and change the color to black. And by the way, a shortcut to just duplicate another color that you already have. If you click on the black one and then click over here, it'll add a black. If you click on the white one and click, it'll add a white. And you just click and hold and drag out to delete one. So just a little pointer there if you didn't know about that. So click OK. And we want to change the opacity of this to pretty low. Uh, let's do let's do about 20%. Yeah, we'll do 20%. And the very last thing is we want an outer glow. Blend mode to screen. We want the color to be white. And we want the uh, size of it to be about, mm, we'll say about 10. Stop whining at me, dog. Get out of here. Crazy dog. And hit OK. So that is it for the actual uh, texture of the glass. And the last thing you need to do is with your uh, uh, freaking letter <laughs> selected, change the fill to about 20%. And what that's going to do is uh, it's it's basically uh, the actual G itself is the fill, um, so like the white color. And if we change that to 20% opacity, you'll notice if we create a copy, you can kind of see through it like glass. It's crazy. All right. So that is it for the glass itself. But now we actually want to we want to actually add a texture on the glass. So we're actually not done with the glass. I lied to you. So the next thing we want to do is we want to add a texture onto this glass because most glass isn't just going to be like super 
clean like this. It needs to kind of have like a little texture in it. So to do that, we're going to basically record an action. And an action is where you can record a bunch of steps in Photoshop, whether it be filters or changing the size of things, and then play it back on any layer that you want. So to get to actions, it's this little play button right here. Or if you don't see it, just go to Window and hit Actions. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit new action right here, just like the new layer button. And we're going to name it, uh, name it record. We're going to name it, uh, let's see, texture glass with a bunch of S's. That way I know which one it is. And hit record. So now that it's recording, you'll see this little button here. We can actually hide the actions right, uh, actions window there. And it's still recording. So what we want to do is we want to hold control and highlight this little T here where the text is and, and left click and what that does is it makes a selection of your layer and the next thing we want to do is we want to add a new layer but we want to hold control while we left click on this thing and that way it's actually going to add a new layer below the G which is what we want and so now that it's still selected we're going to hit filter render clouds and then we're going to go to filter uh, if you're on CS5 or earlier, you're going to go to Distort Glass. If you're on CS6 like me, uh, uh, CS6, you're going to uh, click Filter Gallery, and then it's under Distort and then Glass. So um, whichever way you get there, basically when you get to the glass, it's going to ask you some uh, settings, and you want the distortion to be 20, the smoothness to 1, and the texture to Tiny Lens, and then hit OK. And then go ahead and hit Control D to deselect, or just click Select deselect and that is it for the actual action so now what we need to do is we need to stop the recording so go ahead and open up your actions palette again and hit stop so now we've got this texture glass here and here's all the things that we did set selection make a layer add clouds clouds filter gallery and then uh, deselect so that's pretty cool uh, now we can actually apply that to any layer we want so uh, for now, I'm actually going to go ahead and delete this uh, layer that we just created because we already have the action to create it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, uh, come on now, there we go. I'm going to type out the rest of my letters. And what I want to type out is glass. So just bear with me while I do this real quick. G L. And then we want an A for awesome. And I really like this effect because uh, I think the, the coolest thing about it is just the way it looks, uh, you know, when they're kind of overlapping a little bit, the little see-through stuff. It's pretty baller. We'll do, we'll do right there. That's fine. And we'll kind of resize this down and we'll kind of put it in the middle. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and apply that uh, texture that we created in the action. So with the G selected, we'll come up to actions, we'll select the textured glass, and we'll hit play. And boom, it does it for us. We'll do the same thing for the L, the same thing for all of the letters, A. And all I'm doing is I'm just selecting my next letter, and then I'm hitting play on the action that we want. And then the last S, and hit play boom alright so we're done with that we can close it and let's actually go ahead and move this S over just a bit right there okay so now what we want to do is it's created all these textures for each of our letters here uh, I want to turn down the opacity on these because we don't want it to be like this and by the way this is a good way to create like chrome or that uh, metal effect too if you ever needed that so but we don't want that we want it to look like glass so let's go ahead and hold control and we'll select all of these layers that it just created with these textures and we're going to turn the fill of those way down to about let's say 25% because that looks pretty good so now you can see it, it looks a little more realistic kind of more like glass and that's really all you have to do as far as the text itself so if that's all you wanted to do you're pretty much done and uh, you can use this kind of on whatever you want uh, let me actually go ahead and select them all and hit merge and I'll show you, you can actually move these on to, you know, things like this. Uh, and you can see it's got a nice kind of glass see-through texture thing going on. So, pretty cool effect if you ever needed to use it. But uh, just to keep going here, uh, I'll hit Control-Z. And uh, I'm going to make a new group, and I'm going to name it Text. 
and I'm going to put all these layers in here for our text into there. So now we've got that on basically one uh, group. And now we can auto select that and just move it around if we need to. And make sure you have group selected for an auto select checked if you want to click and move this around. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add this like crazy bright line beneath the glass to make it look like it's super cool even though it already is. So we'll create a new layer above the background and we'll select this uh, elli elliptical I can't say that word elliptical marquee and we're gonna select just underneath the A something like that and we're gonna hit shift F5 or edit fill and we're gonna fill it with white and click OK and then control D to deselect and uh, I'm gonna zoom in actually and hit control T and make this a little thinner and hit enter and then control zero to zoom back out and now I want this to be kinda like blurred out to the left and the right so I'm gonna go to filter blur motion blur and I'm gonna change the angle here to zero and the distance to maybe like 250 hit OK and then I want it to I want to apply that filter again so I can hit filter motion blur and hit it again and you can see it's kinda adding more blur and then a, a shortcut is control F to keep doing it so I'll do it maybe one I'll do it one more time so that's pretty good and then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna duplicate this this uh, this line layer here and to do that I can just hit control J or click and drag new layer there we go and then I'm gonna hold shift I'm gonna select them both right click and merge them so now that it's one layer and I'm gonna actually double click on it and I'm gonna hit outer glow and I'm gonna change the color to red and I'm gonna hit OK OK so now I've got this like cool red outer glow over it and I'm gonna actually use my arrow keys here and with the uh, this uh, move tool selected I'm actually gonna hit up on my keyboard and move it up just beneath the text uh, about right there the next thing I want to do is I want this to be even more bright. I want it to kind of like stick out. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to select my brush tool. I'm going to select a soft brush. And I'm going to bring down the size. And by the way, a shortcut to bring down the size of your brush is the left and right brackets. And then if you hold shift and you hit right bracket, it'll make your brush harder. So if you watch up here, you'll see this is now a hard brush. If I hold shift and I hit the left bracket, it's making it soft. So uh, I want it to be as soft as it can be. That's what she said. And I'm going to make it small. And I'm going to click here. And I'm going to hold shift. Come all the way across. And then I'm going to change this blending mode to overlay. And now it looks like a lightsaber. <laughs> and I'm going to hit filter, motion blur, uh, just once. And that looks pretty good. Yeah. So we keep it like that. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select this text group, which is my glass text, and I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to actually make a duplicate of that. And that's going to kind of brighten things up, and I, I like that how that looks better than just that. That looks a little flat. That kind of has more life to it. And now I'm going to add kind of a cloudy background. So to do that, I'm going to create a new layer just above my background. So it's a blank layer, and you want to make sure that this is black and white and then hit filter render clouds and then I'm going to change the blending mode of this layer to color dodge so now it looks like it's glass in hell and <laughs> I'm going to select my eraser and I'm going to actually just erase some of the stuff on the outside usually I'd use a, a layer mask or a, yeah a layer mask to do this but I'm just going to save some time and just erase what I don't want and then I'm going to change the opacity down pretty low maybe like hmm, yeah 40 percent or so and there's two more quick things we're gonna do to finish this off uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, hold shift and select both of these text layers we're gonna bring it down and create a new copy of those and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna hit merge layers so now this is just one uh, glass layer on its own here and I'm gonna hit control T to bring up the trans uh, transform controls and I'm gonna right click hit flip vertical and then hit enter and I'm gonna click and drag and bring it down to about right there 
and then I'm going to click this button down here in the bottom right, add layer mask, and then I'm going to come over here to the gradient tool, which is underneath your paint bucket, by the way. If you click and hold, uh, it'll bring it out. So I want a gradient, and I want it to be black to transparent. Uh, linear, normal, everything's normal, and I'm going to basically click down here in the A, and I'm going to bring it up while holding shift, and about right there, and I'm going to let go. And that's basically creating kind of a reflection, but I don't want it to be this obvious and harsh, so I'm actually going to turn the opacity down pretty low to about 40%. And one more final thing is I'll create a new layer above everything. I'll select my brush tool and I want the brush to be pretty big about that big and I want it to be a soft brush and I want it to be white and I'm gonna go ahead and click once right in the middle like so and I'm gonna change that blending mode to overlay yeah I think overlay will be best probably maybe soft light yeah we'll do overlay and I'll bring the opacity down just a tad and that basically as you can see kinda adds some brightness there in the middle and um, yeah I think that's really about it uh, and then maybe one last thing we can add some uh, a gradient map uh, hit soft light and change this to something like that turn the opacity way down and then bump it up just a tad and, and to, I'm adding these down here this little thing right here it's uh, an adjustment layer so I'm just clicking and maybe let's see let's do human saturation we'll bring the saturation down just a tad and then we'll do one more which will be a uh, photo filter and we'll do something like a red what if we bump that way up cool yeah so yeah I mean that's that's really about it um, you know and of course you can do a lot of other stuff to this so just make it your own uh, and you know like I said you can use the same filter on top of other things and uh, by the way if you want to ch if you do all this and you're like oh yeah the red looks cool and but maybe you want to change everything to like green just add an adjustment layer here called hue and saturation and then change this hue slider around to whatever color you want and what that's doing is it's basically affecting everything below it with this hue and saturation so if you wanted like a pink you could do that yellow you know whatever but just keep in mind that once you get this far, it's going to be, you can't really change what this text says. So make sure you spell everything right when you do it. And that's about it, guys. Just let me know if you have any questions or comments and make sure you subscribe. Thank you.